Finding the right voice for Darth Vader was another challenge. And action! Tearing this ship apart piece by piece until you've found those tapes. Find the passengers of this vessel. I want them alive! I can still hear David Prowse's accent in the Darth Vader mask muffled because he would do the real dialogue. You are part of the Rebel Alliance and a traitor. Take her away. It was hilarious and terrifying at the same time because we didn't know what Darth sound like. That was the first time we heard him. We're like, is that it? Is it going to be some Scottish guy or what is this? When they say, have music, um, people feel like they need to fill the whole space. It's a bit like dialogue when people do yeah. you know, write a script and they feel like they have to overwrite it. Yeah. I mean, that's part of the... That's really an important part of the brief, isn't it, I think, as well. So as well as the composers needing to develop their understanding of that, I think there's also a need for, often for, especially new directors, to understand how to brief a composer, yeah? How to mm. work with a composer. And, and, you know, one of the things from activities, and I got this feedback from composers, that the brief was very lacking. Right. And, and unhelpful. Right. I think it might have been Tara that said to us during the rehearsal that uh, actors actually want directors to direct. Yeah. They don't want to be told, do your <coughs> thing, make Sorry. it beautiful. They actually want to know what the expectation is. And I think the same applies often to the composer. It, it, the, compo the composer doesn't just want to be told, you do know, your you're thing. A, you're a magician. Right. You know, create magic. It's unhelpful it was for the community mm. it was uh, a, a more like we Open had it over yeah if it was your film written for you and you very much had a vision so even though i i, I know i know archie i've worked with archie mm -hmm. i know that i've i've come up with template of yeah the the vision i have for the for tone the and the sound yeah like a very loose if you yeah. like um, Almost like at the very start of the project, you do these kinds of the theme colors. boards, don't you? Yeah, yeah, exactly. These are the colours, yeah. this is the tone. Because you do know that it's going to be really important. It's going to really add to the drama yeah. or comedy. Yeah, yeah. Or There are examples out there of where you take the same scene and compose <laughs> it in a completely different <laughs> way. And it works. Adelie penguins are skilled hunters preying on a variety of fish. They can dive to depths of over 500 feet and stay underwater for up to 20 minutes at a time. Always think of, you know, one of the simplest things was the, you know, the theme to Jaws, mm. which is just so, I mean, brilliant, right? Perfect, isn't Perfect. It? Yeah, yeah. and actually, I've seen a clip with without the mm. thing, and, and it does look like you know a rubber well, rubber yeah, shot, yeah. right? Yeah. And then, but as soon as you dun, 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 yeah. put that in, you've already. Yeah. I'm like, actually, you could have a, you could have black, yeah, um, on there, and you'd be yeah. already like, shit, something's yeah. gonna happen. We would like to show you this evening a scene from Jaws without John's music. Hooper, get clear of the barrel! Hooper! Tie it up, will you? Your turn, Quinn. Okay, now, that's what John gets when the director is finished and hands him his movie. John has anywhere from a number of weeks to a few, very few months, to work whatever magic he's going to work. In this scene, for instance, there are four or five key moments that have to be underscored, where the audience has to be told where to go. Now you're going to see what John adds to a film. <laughs> Coming. Hooper, you clear of the bow. Hooper! Tie it up, will you? Your turn, Quinn. Hooper, where are you?
So just for a slightly different perspective on this, um, I played that video with John Williams uh, to my brother, who's uh, completely not uh, a musician, a composer, not involved in the film industry. And it's quite interesting to hear the spontaneous perspective of somebody uh, who doesn't think about this uh, quite as much as perhaps we do and just get his perspective on, on that video. It's bloody amazing, isn't it, to listen to it with our music? Just how boring it would be. <laughs> How utterly boring a film, generally, any film would be without music. It's surprising. It surprises me, even though I know it. <laughs> Every time I sort of hear these sort of things, even though that music was very 80s orchestral music, it still suits and uh, gives it all, all of the atmosphere. None of the, the acting doesn't give the atmosphere at all, does it? It's all the music. Yeah, music's it. I mean, when we've been making this clip, these clips from stock, which don't come with sound <clears throat> then we've added some sound design mm -hmm. and then we've added perhaps a voiceover mm -hmm. and then we've added some temp music in one of the harshest environments on earth adaptation is essential for survival and just to see the transformation that each of those elements makes to it i think one of the jobs of the sound in general is 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 a glue isn't it to mm. hold it together in a way it is a glue and 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 a, a kind of a comfort blanket too because that's why you're kind of in safe you know if mm. Hans Zimmer comes on your project you're kind of in safe hands yeah. you know that you know however i think it's we're not we that they're not given enough recognitions Credit. to credits to, yeah. in the industry today of just how much and that's why this was so exciting because i felt like it was it was again really saluting the fact that a film without yeah you know a good score is is going to definitely be be lacking but i think in general there's still some way to go in terms of recognizing the value of the music and not seeing it as an afterthought and not just taking some Stock footage, uh, stock music, for example, and slapping it on, especially like as you go towards the more student end or the mm -hmm, indie mm -hmm. end. I think I, I mean, I don't. I've never sat in a film school lecture, mm -hmm. but I get the feeling that when they're putting their micro budgets together for their little projects, that they often don't actually allo allocate oh, any allocate. money I for music. Add absolutely say that that was that was that was. I'd be really fascinated to know, like, to what extent film schools talk to aspiring directors and producers about the music and do they actually go in and study good the, and yeah, bad, I successful you know what? and successful? I think that's a really good um, point. It, it, it's kind of way down on the, on the line there. And kind of know. just assumed or just taken for oh, granted we'll go, or something. Yeah, or just, you know, oh, you know we'll come to that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. Like, it, it will happen, yeah. but, you know, right yeah. right now, let's just, you know. Um, I wonder why that is. Do you think it's just because of the ubiquitous nature of music now in general, that we hear it everywhere we go, and we just think that it's just readily available and you can just pick it off a tree like picking... But it's interesting because it's always been so important, even from in Hollywood, mm. you know? It's like it's never not been important. Um, yeah. I, I, I think it's it probably just... came before the dialogue and everything. Yeah, didn't it? The music. exactly. In, 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 Even in, in the in, silent yeah, movies. In the silent movies, it was everything. They had the orchestra, didn't 100%. they? The... Unlike what the name suggests, silent movies weren't silent at all. I mean, sure, they had no dialogue, but music was a huge part of the experience. So when people went to the theater to see a film, there would always be a pianist or even a small orchestra who would play the music right in front of the audience and perfectly match it to everything that's happening on the screen. Whether again, it's just that kind of acceptance of it. It's it, it's there, um, and thank you know, thank God it's there. But it's it's you know we're not really you know. The more you singing. think about it, the kind of more strange it is, right? That, <laughs> that, that there's a lot of money, there's a lot of time mm -hmm. and effort going into preparing people to work as filmmakers, mm -hmm. and yet the music side of it, as far as we know, is kind of. We'll get to it later, as he said. It's a bit weird, isn't it? 
I suppose there are different components to film, yeah. right? Yeah. And when you're up and running, there's so much to already consider. You are a little bit like, a bit like the editing. Mm. You know, you know mm. you're going to do yeah. it. Yeah. But actually at this point, yeah. we're just going to focus on everything that needs to be done at this stage. Yeah. Um, because I'd, I'd I'd say editing is again one of you know that you know people are like, totally yeah. and it's everything. Yeah, a good editor coming in and and, and being able to really yeah. again get the beats right. Yeah. get the beats right. Yeah, and I'm really hoping you know that in some small way, <clears throat> ultimately the YouTube can be one of the things that starts to draw that together, and we help the composers to recognise a little bit the perspective of the filmmaker and and. Fundamentally, that the films are not vehicles for their music, that they're actually serving the vision of the director yeah. and or producer. But conversely, that those producers and directors really value, you know, and think about them, the music.